Please say hello in the chat. Please give your sh share your full correct name in the chat, punctuated name. If you possess the capacity to do so, I'd appreciate that. You know my full correct name. I just ask the same consideration to you. Just so I know who's here. Which we have, I want to say, 30-some loyalists and contributors. And I did post a notice yesterday. I put this live stream page up yesterday and I put a posted a notice in the community section. So I full on expected uh, at least a dozen members to be here. Um, but I see that is not the case. I see there are two people watching this. So that means there are two members watching this. One of them has credentialed themselves and the other one chooses to be a member lurker perhaps so members i'm just going to have to reevaluate the way i'm doing this because i've already done one member's live stream and now i've done another one doing another one and there's two people here one of which is a willing participant and the other one is silent so it's just i'm going to have to maybe make these streams available to all the members rather than just the loyalist contributors so we can get more people or maybe just do the streams, keep them public. Because sometimes I do get a lot of participants in the public. The whole reason I wanted to make it members only is so that you could ask me questions that you really couldn't ask in the public. You know, questions that maybe you felt uncomfortable asking in the public. You could ask them here. It's in the confidential. Only you and me and YouTube will see it, whatever that means. So I guess I'll start talking about some, some things here since there are no questions. Um, I will say that the other viewer who is watching that has not commented or said hello or credentialed themselves, it is your duty to do so because you are a loyalist contributor. It is your duty to contribute just as I'm contributing for rule one, rule equal. So keep that in mind. What you put in is what you get out. All right. I mean, it's your choice if that's how you want to navigate your contracts. That's fine. I'm not here to tell you what you should or shouldn't do. What I'm telling you are the terms and conditions of this vessel construct, of which you are a guest. Speaking of members, I did have to ban a member. If uh, y'all recall, I did a couple videos on that. The YouTube user known as Stuart Ship. I think they're still a member and I think they can still see this. So maybe, maybe that's why they can't comment because they're banned, yet they still maintain their membership. So maybe that's why. I said my screen is freezing up. So I'm wondering if I'm still coming through or not. I bet that's what it is. I bet that's what it is. I bet that is stewardship. They're watching. So if they are watching, I highly recommend that they go watch the newest For the Quantum Grammar Shoot podcast, where I directly address that situation again ad nauseum but i'm also curious as to if that is them why they would be here when i've quite obviously broken bulk with them 
I quite obviously don't want anything to do with them, don't want to contract with them. I'm done with it. They were always a guest aboard this vessel. They violated the terms and conditions of said vessel and said contracts, and yet they keep coming back. In the fiction, what would you call that? I'm not going to say it, but anyways. <clears throat> I've been getting some interesting comments lately that I'm trying to figure out how to address this whole going into the members only thing is uh, has created a sort of a difficulty in communication for me that I did not foresee in that People still leave public comments, but I'm not really in a position to give detailed, elaborate kuleana because I've restricted myself to only doing one-minute shorts videos in that, in the public. So maybe I jumped the gun too soon on doing everything the way that I did. I'm going to keep on doing it the way I'm doing it at least until the end of this month. And then maybe again, I will adjust some things and maybe probably put it back to the way it was. Because truly in December, I was truly uh, considering not doing YouTube anymore. But circumstances have dictated that I continue doing YouTube, at least for now. So if I'm going to do it, I probably have to keep doing it the way I've been doing it so that the largest amount of people get to see the bulk of the content. That's the way I look at it anyways. But some of these comments, like uh, sometimes I'll get these people that don't know anything about the grammar. All right. They just they don't know anything about the grammar. and so. They will ask questions from a fiction mindset standpoint, which I completely understand because that's what you do in the beginning. Like one, one individual said, they, they went patient. I'm talking about chapter length comment about tangibility and intangibility what it means in an etymology dictionary and say, well, Jason changed the meaning of what tangibility is because tangibility means to touch or something like that. And then they say, did David Wynn Miller ever mention anything about tangibility or non-tangibility? And then at the very end, they say, I am still learning and I will eventually sign up for your classes when I get a chance. And then they leave their first name. But their username just says user something or other. So they don't give their correct name. They low-key criticize uh, an aspect of what I'm teaching. And then they go into, you know, the, did David Wood Miller mention that? And then at the end, they sort of try and, and, from my perception, sort of smooth it over by saying, they're still learning, and um, they're going to contact me for classes. My gut instinct tells me that this person is a troll, right? Because quite simply, if they were studying, and they were specifically studying videos where I mentioned tangibility and non-tangibility, they would not be saying they would not be writing that comment because I give closer as closure as to what I mean by tangibility and non-tangibility in the context of learning this grammar. I give the reasons for why I teach that. I give my finite means for those words in correct sentence structure. Multiple videos. And I also mentioned that yes, I know that David Wynn Miller never ever talked about that. This was a concept that was brought to me by my tutor, colon, raven, hyphen, farhad, hyphen, tohidi, colon, afarid. He created the concept of tangibility and non-tangibility. And what I added to that concept, that knowledge cultivation concept was, 
Okay, if you have tangible and non-tangible, another way of saying that would be fact-based or non-fact-based. Is the word based on a fact <clears throat> or not? Obviously, if it's an adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, it, it can't be a fact because it has not been positioned with a positioned lodial phrase. But is it based on a fact? Like the word love is a fact. When you say for the love, period, it's tangible contract. It's based on a fact. If you say for the the, period, in that sense, the is going to be in the position of a fact, but it's non-tangible. It is not based on a fact. The is never going to be a fact in the sense that love is a fact. The is always going to be non-tangible. Can you feel a the? Can you feel love? Can you touch a cup? Can you touch a the? Maybe on Sesame Street you can when they have the big block letters and the animal and the puppets are touching them. But you see what I'm saying? These, these are knowledge cultivation uh, processes. And the reason why I started teaching these things is because David Wood Miller didn't. Russell G. Gould didn't. The main grammar guys didn't teach it. And Russell isn't even really a grammar guy. Never really been a grammar guy. David was the grammar guy. From my perception. And David taught. Folks, how can I say this? I don't know how many members here have actually spoken personally with David Wynn Miller. I have been blessed with um, the scenarios where I personally spoke with him many, many times on the phone during the last year of his life, through Skype, through text messaging, emails, so on and so forth. And um, I can say I have never spoken with an individual that was possessed of the sheer amount of charisma that that man had. Never. Even on the phone, it came through. So I, as well as many other people, you could watch videos of people because David encouraged people to record conversations with him. He wanted people to, to record and publish and whatever. He didn't mind any of that because I think he knew that, I mean, he would never be boxed in, cornered, trapped or anything because he had that gift of gab. He had that charisma. And when I spoke with him, it was like speaking with a rock star. So you're kind of starstruck is the only way I can put it. You're in awe when you're speaking with someone like that. Folks, I would never put myself in that same category ever, not in a million years. So the point I'm making is that in those videos of David teaching, if you have never seen a David Wynn Miller video in your life and you watch that video, usually I see two basic reactions, two basic responses to his videos. This reaction is one of disbelief incredulity, skepticism, and dismissal. The second response to his videos, if you've never seen them before, is one of awe, being sucked in and just being taken by everything he's saying, and you tend to want to believe everything the guy is saying, whereas the other side is you tend to not believe anything the guy is saying. So when he goes into his grammar talking, you know, when he talks about the grammar, if you're one of those people, one of the latter people who believe what he's saying, you're going to tend to believe everything else too, right? The stuff about the aliens and the dying and the no sleeping and all that stuff. You're going to believe that stuff. And then you're going to automatically believe that everything he says about the grammar is true. 
Now, me, when I first started watching his videos, I kind of fell in the middle there because I was very skeptical about the alien thing. And he was talking about the moon and moving the, the moon and the military. And, and I was very skeptical of those things, but I concentrated on the grammar. I began picking apart the grammar. And then I began to see holes and cracks in what he was saying about the grammar. Like the basic mechanics that he shared were correct. They made sense. And I could certify that with my tutor, Raven. Yeah, they make sense. For the facts, of the facts, are with the facts, of the facts, with the facts, by the facts. One plus two equals three. Three minus two equals one. Um, but then when it came down to the syntax, it was so all over the place. Like he would give two, three, or four syntax, different syntax scenarios for the same sentence. Now, in the context of rule one, rule equal judge mechanics, that could happen. Different syntaxing styles. But Raven and I both realized that it just causes confusion to have that. So we work diligently on trying to figure out a system that everyone could use so that everyone's syntax would be basically the same. So if you do one plus two equals three, three minus two equals one, how many ways can you do that? Are there different variations of that? No, there really isn't. It is what it is. You just have to know the order of operations and, and what your factors are and, and what the plus and the minus means. So we kind of followed that same thing with the syntaxing, and that's when he came up with the tangible, non-tangible concept and tied it in with the mathematical interface and tied it in with the etymology dictionary. You go back to the earliest nativity root meaning of the word or the particle. If that's tangible, then you syntax the word as tangible. And if it is tangible, then it's either going to be what? Verb, adjective, or pronoun. If it's non-tangible, it's either going to be adverb, verb, or pronoun. Or to put it in a negative condition of state, if it's tangible, it would not be an adverb. If it's non-tangible, it would not be an adjective. You know, and all these different things we started putting together so that there was a solid foundation with which people could learn from. And that's where the that concept comes from. Now, if this individual, to bring it back to the, the individual who was... Uh, who was uh, commenting. I don't think they've studied shit on this channel. They say they have, and they've been here a couple days commenting, but I don't think they've studied shit about syntax. Otherwise, they've, they'd, have, they'd have come across some of these concepts that I've just shared. They would have. I don't want to be too dismissive right out of the, right out of the gate. So I just delete comments like that. I wonder if I can make this stream public. Let me see if I can edit. The privacy of this stream so we can get some more people in here. Not that I have anything against the people that are already here. But I feel like it's, I mean, there's not, it's not like an in-depth confidential conversation going on here about nuclear grammar secrets or something. I mean, there's nothing being really discussed here except for me monologuing. So I feel like it would be more beneficial to bring more people in. Let me see if I can make this public. Wouldn't that be crazy if I could do that? Hold up. My computer also updated overnight, and so everything is so slow right now. I have, I can't even put into words my dislike for Microsoft. I can't, you know, as far as their up and stuff go, I really can't even put into words my distaste and dislike for them. The live stream is public. I just looked at it from another profile.
So we should see some people coming in here. So now what I'm going to do, <clears throat> if you stick with me here for a minute, I'm going to go get some coffee. This is my favorite mug. This is my granddaughter, Nadia. Her mother and her made this mug for me. It's my favorite mug in the world. That's right. I'm a mother freaking grandpa. All right. I will be right back. So please, if you have questions, if you've written down questions, anything you want to ask me, it doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's at least periphery, peripheral related to the grammar. Whether it has to do with grammar or it has to do with live life claim, favorite, volition claim, please, CPAS, C treaty, port authority, domicile claim, trusts, whatever. If you have something to ask me, foreign vessel and dry, excuse me, foreign vessel and dry dock mechanics, anything, feel free to ask. And I will answer to the best of my knowledge. So again, if anybody has any questions, step on up here and ask. I put a link in the comments, I mean in the chat, for the my buy me a coffee page. So because a lot of people are saying, oh, they can't figure out <clears throat> how to send a super chat on, on YouTube, or they can't figure out how to join the membership on YouTube, which I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not sure what the communication breakdown is there because for me, it's very simple. But what's for simple for me may not be simple for you. So I've created another venue for people who want to contribute to what it is I do. If you feel that what I do is valuable, if you feel, feel that what I teach is valuable, the content I have in this YouTube is valuable, you can go to that link, www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash Jason Matthew Glass and buy me a coffee or buy me a few coffees. However many coffees you think I ought to have. Posting roads. Okay, first off, I will say that if you have a specific situation in mind that you're trying to navigate, I do provide workshops for that in a confidential with very detailed, specific data. But you would have to contact me, Jason at the G17 at gmail.com and apply for that workshop. Number one and number two, you would probably have to have take my quantum grammar test. And if you pass that test, then I would share that stuff with you. But of course, I can share it in a general sense for the public. Posting roads in a general sense. Let, let me give you an example. One example, okay? Let's say that you receive in your mailbox a summons from a court. And you see on there that it has a date on there and a time that they are summoning the all cap name to that foreign vessel and dry dock location. Okay. One example of posting roads would be you within 72 hours, which I mean, you can push it back a little bit. It depends upon the situation. But myself, I always like to give Kuliana to those particular type of situations in 72 hours. The precisions. The timeline is very powerful. So I create my document contract postal vessel court venue using correct sentence structure. Of course, I syntax that summons and give closure to the syntax values and the modification that's been on there. I commandeer the vessel, put my syntax key in there, put the dictionary in or access to the dictionary thereof. And all those ducks in a row in the document contract postal vessel court venue, which you can find in my mini class playlist. You take all of that. And then in your document contract postal vessel court venue, you would make a claim in there that you, your volition is to board that vessel at that address at a certain time, which happens to be 
the same time that they put in the summons and say that you're going to be there, that you're going to walk through and you're going to be peaceful, neutral, honorable and graceful and maintain rule one rule equal. And then you would send it back to them. Now, remember, I'm not going into great detail about this. I'm just using uh, generalities. So you have basically posted your road to that location in the now space because everything is now. So you will then physically travel, navigate as postmaster, bank banker, authority, as, as I use, I use document contract court authority. I don't use the word judge. Navigate to that location. And you would have to have all your ship's papers, all your ducks in a row, your live life claim, if you have a fate writ volition claim, if you have a sea pass sea treaty, port authority, everything at your disposal that you have claims that pertain to that particular situation and credentialing yourself, you would have to have all that stuff on you. And you would also have, have to have several copies of your document contract postal vessel court venue, which specifically pertains to that scenario. So you have posted your roads. This is like posting a notice. You posted your roads. You're going to be on that road going there to that location in the now space. And that's what that means. When you say your roads, I personally, I don't think of it as my road. None of these roads are mine, right? That's just a figure of speech. I'm just posting a road that I'm going to be with the oite of. So that's posting roads. Nothing complicated about it. It's just a basic comprehension of postal mechanics. I mean, you don't even need, you don't need a CPAS C treaty or anything like that to use correct sentence structure in those venues. You could just have a live life claim and maybe a postmaster badge that you could make yourself. Because anyone who travels from point A to point B can be a postmaster, meaning a master of the post themselves. Okay? You wouldn't be a postmaster. Like, like if you would go down to your local postal station or IE post office, and say that you're a postmaster, they're going to probably say, no, you're not a postmaster. And then you would have to explain and give closure as to what you mean by postmaster. You don't mean a postmaster of their vessel. You mean a postmaster of yourself and the documents you're carrying that you have autographed the stamp on. That one over there that has a stamp on it that, that doesn't have your autograph on it, you are not the postmaster of that. You are only the postmaster of what you autograph and what you carry or travel with that you have autographed over those stamps that you've paid the fee for freight for. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate the coffee, man. I appreciate any contributions. See? As soon as I made it public, the viewership went up. So again, I'm going to have to reassess, reevaluate, and uh, figure out a way to, if there is a way forward with this YouTube stuff to increase subscriber base and things like that and membership base. I just hope that some of these people that have been coming in here from the RJG contingent, I hope that they have the cojones to, to uh, comment. Most of them, it, it appears, feels, they feel comfortable commenting in a comments field on a video, but they don't feel comfortable in a live setting leaving a comment. 
which I don't know why, because most of them hide behind nom de guerres anyways. Very rarely do they use any semblance of their correct name. So members, I hope you've seen, uh, or I hope you got a chance to bookmark at least the For the Quantum Grammar Shoot video I just published in the members only section. The title of the video is Contract Knowledge and Joinder. And I go into the details of a specific situation where I had to break bulk with a contract party. And then I go into other details of other scenarios where that's happened. Thankfully, for me at least, thankfully, it's only happened a very small handful of times with a very small handful of people over the years. Now, it's not a, an inevitable thing. It usually happens with people uh, how can I say this without <laughs> sounding like a jerk? Um, people who lack humility by my perception. Now, I'm not saying that I possess humility. I'm saying that I cultivate humility. To the best of my ability, I cultivate humility. It's up to the people I interact with as to whether they think I possess humility or not. It's not up for me to say that I do or I don't. What I can say is for these other people, it's for me, in the context of me being a tutor and them being a student, there, they, there came a point where their humility was voided and they thought they knew more than I did about this grammar and about the technology and about how to use it. And so they began basically, from my position, projecting their wants and their belief systems onto me. And they were trying to take what I was teaching and try and make it fit their specific belief system, which is not how it works. Correct sentence structure is a thing unto itself. It doesn't fit in anywhere. If you're going to use it, you have to fit stuff around it. You see? It is the first and foremost thing. So once you start trying to do that, you know, trying to make it molded into your own personal belief systems, things are going to fall apart pretty quick. And I can bet every single person that I have broken bulk with, I can bet that in the ensuing scenarios that came up on them, I can bet that they were very challenging and that they did not turn out the way the individual would consider to be successful. That's a guess on my part. I bet dollars to donuts. Whether it's the individual who wanted the fiction system to be afraid of them and they wanted the fiction system to go running when, they, when the fiction system saw them coming, they wanted to make the fiction system pay for what they did, you know, and this and that, or whether it's the individual who refused to use the one by 1.9 flag, or whether it's the individual who claimed that they knew the mathematical interface on the grammar and it was some big, huge, complicated thing, but yet they could not use the grammar in a one-on-one -on -one setting off the cuff like that, and they couldn't syntax correctly, but yet they claim to know the mathematical interface. How's that even possible? Does that even make sense to you folks? <laughs> I can explain the mathematical interface in under one, one minute to you right now. Now, if you're a beginner, I don't know if it's going to make much sense to you. But I can bet if there are members watching, They'll know what I'm talking. Oh, okay. One minute. I got 50 seconds. Okay. So one plus two equals three, three minus two equals one. How do you check that problem? 
One plus two equals three. You write it backwards. Three minus two equals one. The factors maintain their value. The one is a one. The two is a two. The three is a three over here. And it is over here, too, when you go run it backwards. The equal sign remains neutral. It's an equal sign on both sides. What is the difference? The difference is the plus and the minus. And when you use correct sentence structure, the positionals for, of, with, and by, for is congruent with by, of is congruent with, with, they serve the same function as the plus and the minus. So when you write a sentence forwards, for the facts, of the facts, are, with the facts, of the facts, with the facts, by the facts, you can run it backwards. For becomes by, of becomes with. One plus two equals three. Three minus two equals one. And that's the mathematical interface on the grammar. I am really, really, really shocked that no one has any other questions. No, I'm kidding. I'm not shocked. Not shocked at all. Let me see if I can find, bring something up here to talk about. Oh, Daryl Bennett, if you're out there watching, thank you, my friend. Much appreciated, the coffee. Much appreciated. If you want to send me a coffee, go to that link. It's pretty easy to do. I mean, by my perception, I am a definitely a technically challenged individual as far as computers and things go. But it's pretty easy. Um, oh, okay. So here's another thing I'm going to address. Since I am in the public right now, some newcomers, some noobs have been coming on here and on TikTok saying that I, Colin J. Snipe and Matthew Colin Glass, I'm on some court sort of list on some website. And then some people have said I'm on several lists. So the Mark, colon, Mark, hyphen, lowercase k, Kishon, colon, Christopher's website, I'm listed as a toxic person. And then I guess in a video that somebody watched somewhere, colon, Russell, hyphen, J, colon, Gould, I guess specifically mentioned me as someone who is spreading disinformation. And I guess I'm also on Russell's non-authorized list, which I've been on for a while. I've been well aware of that. And I'm also on Russell's wanted list, which means he wants me. It's nice to be wanted, but I don't swing that way, bro. Sorry. I'm married, bro. <laughs> but it's nice to be wanted, and it's nice to be listed. Who was it that said any publicity is good publicity? I have gotten, you know, lots of attention from people that have come over from his contingency. Not so much Mark's, but Russell's contingency to come over to see what exactly I'm all about. You know, and I mean, it's up to you if you think that, uh, like Mark says, uh, if I'm listed on his toxic list of toxic individuals, um, Ain't that the pot calling the kettle black? Uh, do you find me toxic? Is this is what I teach on this channel toxic? Is quantum grammar toxic? Um, or maybe it's just me. My personality is toxic. 
My personality is toxic to him making money, perhaps. I don't know. The same with Russell. You know, I mean, him saying I spread disinformation. Let's look at that word for a minute, ladies and gentlemen. Disinformation. So you have dis, which means no. In, which means no. Form. Then you have A, which is a connective element. And then ION, or AT is a connective element. And then ION is contract. So it's a no, no form of contract. So that's kind of goofy, don't you think? I think it's pretty goofy. Like, what is the disinformation specifically that that I'm spreading? I mean, it's easy to say someone's spreading disinformation. And, of course, folks, you've never heard me say anything like that about anyone else. The only thing I've ever claimed that I can back up and prove is that Russell J. Gould does not have closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. And I can prove that you, you, the viewer, or he can publish any correct, what they call a correct sentence structure document. And I can show you the mistakes on it as per the rules set down by Colin David Eiffelman, Colin Miller. I can show you that they don't use correct grammar. Same thing with Mark Lowercase k. Any correct sentence structure that he has up, I can show you where his mistakes are. And I mean, <laughs> if you have 0 to 100% knowledge level on correct sentence structure, I would say Russell's knowledge level, based upon the documents that I have seen, is about 65% to 75% closure. Mark's knowledge is more like 30%. So I can see why folks like that would want to try and slander me, for lack of a better word. Because I'm the only one out here teaching correct grammar that I know of, besides my student, Colin Ricardo, Colin Marseille, in which he hasn't really put out any videos in the last few months. He hasn't really been active on his YouTube channel that I know of, or in the uh, correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar contingent. So I really am the only one out here teaching correct grammar that I know of. And that is, folks, that is not an ego thing. I challenge you to find someone else teaching correct grammar. And in order to know what correct grammar is, you would have to have closure on it yourself. And let's see, we do have quite a few viewers here. But in the chat, we have two participants. I can say for sure that one participant is damn close to having closure on correct sentence structure. And that's because they are a student of mine. Uh, they took a few classes with me, and they're a very quick learner. Yes, I'm talking about April there. They're a very quick learner, and they're nearly there. And I hope they continue on with their studies every single day because learning correct sentence structure is like walking up a down escalator. If you are doing anything besides moving forward, you're moving backwards. If you're sitting still, if you take a break, you're moving backwards. Until such time as you reach that aha moment, when it clicks in your brain, then it's going to be like riding a bike for you for the rest of your foreseeable future. But you first have to reach that aha moment. And I don't think she's quite there yet. I might be wrong. But for my, you know, my last uh, classes with her, she wasn't quite there. But I can tell you what. She knows more than Russell J. Gould does about the grammar. Based upon performance, based upon performance, folks, based upon what Russell has put out in the public, undocumented. But you will find that, you know, I mean, it, it is exceptional in a sense that you look at how many people on this earth that can actually 
comprehend this grammar technology and actually use it. They can actually create a correct sentence structure. They can actually syntax with correctness. It's the 1% of the 1% of the 1%. QPWO space 10FUL. I will answer your question if you tell me your full correct name. You know my full correct name, Colin Jason. I have Matthew Colin Glass. You may call me Jason. I ask you your full correct name so that I know who it is that I'm speaking with, and I will definitely answer your question. Okay, so that's as far back as I've gone. So Jens, I'll just say the, the ones that I think are that could use it and be successful with it. They have enough closure. I would say Jens. Die, Pascal, Annette, Nathaniel, Ivandian, April, and Annette. So eight people, sure, that I think possess the capacity to use this stuff Is there confidentia confidentially for a student? Well, yes. The, the correct venue to apply for a workshop would be my email address, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. You share your correct name there. It is a confidential venue. What I'm asking you here is we're in the public right now. So you're publicly asking a question. So I'm publicly asking you to credential yourself, to stand behind your claim, your question, you know who I am. I just ask the same consideration to you. Step up into the light because if someone is going to be successful in using this grammar, they have to be able to step up to the plate. They have to be able to use their correct name and not be afraid. I mean, that was like one of the most difficult things that I did when I first came into the public in 2018. When I had to stop hiding behind nom de guerres and things like that. But it was the, the best thing that I did as far as online presence goes. Because there's no running away. Like if you notice. Okay, here, here's a difference. Let me juxtapose something for you. Not sure if it's just me, but your sound is glitching very bad. Yeah, it's probably the connection in the weather, Andrew. I apologize for that. Let me juxtapose something for you. David Wynn Miller. David Wynn Miller. On his original website, David Wynn Miller left his email address, his cell phone number, his home phone landline number, his address, not only in Hawaii, but in, in uh, Wisconsin. Did he live in Wisconsin? wherever his home address was in, in the mainland here. He had all that contact information. You could contact him, right? At that same time, at the time while he was still living, his partner, Russell, you could contact Russell via email. And if you were in the inner circle, you could contact him via cell phone. And he had those, those things for a long time. But when David passed away, when David passed away, Russell sort of gradually went into hiding. You could no longer contact him via email. You had to go through an intermediary. You had to go through other people. 
Let's talk Granger. I am not interested in gossip. This is not gossip. This is what actually happened. And if you're interested in grammar, this is history of that grammar. And by the way, you have not stepped forward and shared your correct name. So you don't really have a position to tell anybody anything at this point because you have not shared who you are. You're hiding behind a nom de guerre. So in any case, Russell has made himself unavailable. He has put himself behind a paywall. Why is that? Why did he go into hiding? What is Granger? What is G-R-N-G-E-R? I have no idea what that word means. And you have not shared your correct name, and I'm going to put you in timeout because you now have started spamming comments. All right. So for myself, I've sort of attained a happy medium. I use my email address for people to contact me if they want to contact me. So I am accessible, but under certain terms and conditions, because I learned from what David Wynn Miller did and didn't do and the things that caused him problems. And I also learned from what Russell did, where he went into hiding and made himself not accessible to the public. Um, another thing I'd like to address from that nom de guerre individual, uh, if they want to talk, and I know they use the word Granger, I'm sure they mean grammar. It's a misspelling, which maybe they should study grammar a little bit before they open their mouth again. But if you want to talk about grammar, ask a freaking grammar question. You direct the, the conversation if you want to. That's the whole point of this. You ask a question, I answer it. You have not. You ask the question, what did you say? Who taught me? And then I asked you to share your correct name. And you still won't do it. So those are the terms and conditions. You're a guest here. No one's twisting your arm to be here. All right. So anyways, we get one of those every now and then. But in a couple minutes, they'll be back on here again. And we'll see if they share their correct name. And by the way, those anyone who wants to know who taught me, if you study my videos, I mention who taught me. I mention my pedigree. You could actually go to the... Uh, my journey video. And I explained very explicitly what I did in the first year of learning this, who I learned from, who my teachers were. So it just takes a small amount of effort on the viewer's part to get some background on me as far as this stuff goes. And I think actually I'm going to draw this to a close because I've gone over an hour here. So I think it's important that uh, people realize that I have had, what is it? I counted nine successful success stories as far as this grammar goes. Students of mine that have taken workshops with me. Oh wait, 10. Mark from Australia. I have to include him in there as well. So that's 10 students. And Mark, you know, during the last, I'll share this, during the last few years in Australia, there was some very stringent draconian mandates being brought down. And he was actually learning the grammar during that time, and he used it successfully to safeguard himself and his biosphere. He was able to use correct sentence structure to nav safely navigate through those uh, mandates. So that speaks to the power of this stuff. You just have to do it yourself. A lot of people want to wait and they want to say, well, 
Why should I learn this? That that's the biggest one of the most common questions I get. Why should I learn this? And then my response is, I don't know. Why should you? You're the only one that can answer that. I'm not going to give you a reason why you should learn something. I mean, why would you tell someone else what they should or shouldn't do? If you come here and you're looking to be convinced of something, you're probably in the wrong place. People in here talking about wanting to talk about grammar. Ask a grammar question. I'm here for you. Ask your question. If no questions, if nothing to talk about, then I will draw this to a close. This You see how many pages are left? See how many pages here? This is a record of all every single consultation and workshop I have ever had since February of 2018. Right here. This right here is my log, my court of record, if you want to say it, my log book, my captain's log. This has written incorrect sentence structure. All of the correct sentence structure claims that I have made since the beginning of 2018. Handwritten. Leather binding. I also have some over here in this folder. That's the old domicile contract from March 20th of 2020. You see, so that's what I'm going to do from now on, folks. These live streams are going to go back to being public because I've tried two members only live streams for loyalists and contributors. I even put out the notice for the loyalists and contributors um, about 12 hours ago or so that I was going to be having a live stream, but there's just not enough participation for me to warrant spending this amount of time, which is an hour and 17 minutes so far for one or two people. It's just not the rule one rule equal. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to do these live streams in the public. So definitely get more viewers. And hopefully the participation will. Okay. I have no name. Persona has name. I have no name. Per oh, my goodness. Is this person a spammer? They are a spammer. So this person, see, this individual QPWO has no clue what correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar is, and they obviously – don't observe the balance of the honor and the grace either. Because if they were here to be understood and be cognized, if, if they were here to communicate in a peaceful and neutral manner, they wouldn't be playing word games. They'd just be speaking in plain, simple English as we, we are all speaking here, because that is the common communication venue that we all use. But they're trying to play word games. I don't play word games. I mean, I can play word games, but I choose not to. So if this person does not want to be, and by person, I mean human being, man, woman, they don't want to credential themselves. They don't want to step up into the light. They don't want to use their correct punctuated name. They want to hide and make troll spam comments. And that's fine. I like that because it helps the algorithm. 
But as far as on a personal basis, I know this person's a joker. I file them automatically in the joker section of my, my logbook because they're not serious. I only take people serious who take authority over the words that they speak, whether it's plain, simple English or correct sentence structure. If you're not willing to correct your uh, credential yourself with your full correct punctuated name in my venue, well, then you're a joker. We don't. I'm not going to I'm not going to treat you seriously. Because you're not serious. Because you are a guest here. And you're ignoring the terms and conditions that the master of the vessel is setting forth. So that's that. Does anyone else besides this joker have any questions? By the way, Andrew, Andrew, if you are still watching, my friend, that workshop is still there if you want to take it. That 60-minute workshop is still there. You just have to contact me, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com, and I will give you the I will donate the gift of one hour workshop to you. Daryl Bennett. Bro. What's up, cuzzy bro? Same goes for you, member Daryl Bennett. Thank you very much for your membership. I have also offered you a 60 minute the gift of a 60 minute grammar workshop. Whatever you want to take me up on that, Jason Matthew G17 at gmail.com, Daryl. Keep progressing, man. Keep coming back. I should make a list of those 10 people with their correct name, get in contact with them and see if they give me consent to use their correct names and like publish that in the public here as success stories. Because I have no doubt. Well, I guess after I speak with them, I would have no doubt because there's a couple that I do doubt. Now that I think about it, because if they haven't been doing this, if they haven't been practicing and using it, they might have lost a little bit. But for the most part, the majority of them, I have no doubt that they could use this in a situation to the best of their knowledge and be successful with it. But that only comes from doing workshops, folks. You have to have one-on-ones with a tutor. And you definitely have to vet that tutor. And the way you would vet a tutor is to ask them grammar questions. Daryl says, for the knowledge of the facts is by the facts through CSS, CPSG. And as a grammar tutor, I will definitely critique that for you. Um. Through the word T-H-R-O-U-G-H has no place in correct sentence structure that I know of. There are four positionals, four of, with, and by. Through is not a positional because four is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. Four is the cause, of is concerned, with is possessive, by is authority. Four positionals. Through does not fit in there because what is congruent with through? If for is congruent with by, of is congruent with with, then what is through congruent with? It doesn't work. So you have to have a cause concern. So in this sentence, in Daryl's sentence, it's for the knowledge would be the cause, of the facts would be the concern, and then you put your verb of the thinking in, and then after that it falls apart. So how would I say, how would I correct that? Well, I would start out, you know, and I tell all the beginners to start out like this. I would say, for the claim is knowledge of the facts is with the claim. And whatever your main idea of that you're trying to convey with the sentence, you would put after the word claim. 
So he's trying to say, for the knowledge of the facts is by the facts through correct sentence structure. Maybe you could say something like, for the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the conduit with the correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar of the conveyance with the volition by the claimant, period. Something like that. You're basically saying you're using correct sentence structure as a conduit to convey your knowledge of the facts. It's basically what you're saying. And I think that's what Daryl's trying to say there. So Daryl, you have to have a cause, concern, verb, possessive, and authority for the very basic sentence. And for a more complex sentence, you would have cause, concern, verb, possessive, concern, possessive authority. You would have seven, uh, seven positions, not positions, but seven lines for the facts, of the facts, are, with the facts, of the facts, with the facts, by the facts, or in the simplest form, for the facts, of the facts, are, with the facts, by the facts. For, of, verb, with, of, with, by. For the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the conduit, with the correct sentence structure of the conveyance with the volition by the claimant, and then backwards it would be for the claimant of the volition is with the conveyance of the correct sentence structure, with the conduit of the claim, with the facts by the claimant's knowledge. Boom, done, full stop. That's one way to say what I think Daryl is trying to convey. And I'm using my position as a tutor to say that. I'm not assuming anything. What I just wrote right there, it's a little bit longer than uh, a basic correct sentence structure. For the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the conduit with the correct sentence structure, the conveyance with the volition by the claimant. So that's nine lines, including the verb. All right, 15 seconds, and I'm going to draw this to a close. I will definitely edit this and publish it and continue doing these live streams in the public. So hopefully more people will come forward and participate. Thank you very much for having the cojones to step up and do that, Daryl, because you brought grammar to this live stream. You gave me the opportunity to teach grammar, so much gratitude, my friend. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for people that have the cojones to step up and use their correct punctuated name and allow themselves to be open with all humility for critique or, or compliments, right? That's what I do every day when I come on here. Really ain't no thing. All right, folks. Appreciate you all being here. If you want to see my new podcast video, join up over there as a member. Either tier two or tier one. And you can watch the latest edition of the podcast where I talk about contract knowledge and joinder. Thank you very much. If you would like to learn correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar i offer several choices the first one and the easiest one is to study the almost 900 free public videos on this youtube channel that you're watching right now the second option if you want to see new content is to click the join button on my main youtube page or under any video that you're watching click the join button and you will see two tiers of membership. If you choose the second tier, the Loyalist Contributor tier, and you join that for a monthly support donation, you'll get new content, fresh content, exclusive content not available to the public every month. But keep in mind, there's already almost 900 videos here free to the public to study. 
And the third option is to contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen. And this is for the serious students only. And apply for a correct grammar workshop. But please include your correct name when contacting me. And I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation. And you and I will have a conversation. You can ask me whatever you want. I'll answer your questions. I'll do the same with you. I'll ask you questions and we'll see if indeed you are really serious or not. Thank you.